and welcome to Virtual Peak and welcome today to, um, um, we're really, really privileged to have um, Dr. Rebecca Crane here with us today um, and she's going to talk to you about um, mindfulness and um, excitingly, um, Rachel Peak and Bangor University are um, joining together to um, deliver a course um, for people out there with Parkinson's, um, a mindfulness course. Um, and Rebecca's here today to explain a little bit more about mindfulness and how it's going to help, um, particularly help people with Parkinson's. Um, so Rebecca, can you first of all tell me a little bit about yourself um, and then how you got into mindfulness uh, and what maybe mindfulness it is for people who don't really understand it? Mm, yeah, it's really good to be here with you. So um, I, I work at Bangor University and I lead the Centre for Mindfulness Research and Practice, which is a, a training and research centre dedicated to examining the potential for mindfulness in a range of contexts. Um, we've been based in Bangor University as a centre since 2001, but before that, Bangor University for um, a good decade before that was researching mindfulness in the context of depression. Um, so I got engaged with that work because I was an occupational therapist working locally in North Wales um, with people who were experiencing depression as well as a range of other mental health problems. And I had a, a long standing personal engagement with mindfulness practice, really from my late teens, early twenties, I spent time in Thailand and India. I don't really know what was pulling me, but there was something very strong for me, interest in, in Eastern mind training practices. And, and I really pursued that through my twenties and did a lot of sort of personal study and engagement with the practice. And it was a very strong personal resource, um, but it wasn't explicitly part of my professional work um, until I heard of this work that was happening at Bangor University and I got really engaged with that. Um, and then later in 2001, I, I was employed at the university and we've been building a research and training center there since then. So, and then this connection here. So I was diagnosed with Parkinson's earlier this year um, and have been navigating that on a very personal level, um, but really very interested both personally and you know, wider because of my professional engagement in mindfulness with the ways that this can, is supportive to me and potentially to others um, in navigating the, the, the range of challenges that, that we experience with the condition. Yeah. yeah. And, and so what we're looking at really is, is um, so mindfulness in itself. Can you just explain a little bit um, a bit? about what mindfulness is, what, what yeah. is this practice, what does it contain, what mm. elements make up? So, so mindfulness in a way is a natural capacity that we all have. So we all have the capacity to be fully present and engaged with experience in the present moment um, without in a way getting tangled with it, without judging it or, so, it, so it's, just, it's being able to have this sort of full engagement with experience both within our own being, so our thought processes, our emotions, the feelings in our body, but also in the world around us. Um, but it's a, it's a trainable capacity as well. So if we engage in certain practices, we can develop this capacity and hone it. And, and then it becomes a resource for us in enabling us to, um, in, in a whole range of different ways, it becomes a resource. And we can talk about that perhaps in more detail, but. But it, it, it really, I guess in brief, it, rather than being on sort of autopilot where we're just reacting to what's happening to us, we're more able to be responsive and choiceful and conscious about how we engage with things. And yeah. I guess we all live these, this crazy busy life, you know, each and every one of us has, mm. has you know, all these days has so much you know we we all uh, I speak to so many people who are juggling so many balls and, and mm -hmm. trying to keep all, all things going on at, all, all at the same time and and so I suppose a lot of us don't have um or think about the t have the time as uh, as are often told you know we don't have the time to to 
to just take a step back, I guess, mm -hmm. and yeah. just to be with ourselves, right? And mm -hmm. and to, to feel those things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so I, I think, obviously by listening to you and, and seeing where, where you're coming from, it's something that can help each and every one of us, irrespective mm -hmm. if we've got Parkinson's yeah. or not, because, um, because of, because of um, yeah, being in that moment uh, and um, taking some, maybe some time out of mm -hmm. life right. <laughs> and its craziness. Yeah. Um, so, so if we think about Parkinson's, um, so, at reach your peak we work with people with parkinson's all the time we talk um we understand parkinson's we understand the um motor symptoms though the, the cardinal motor symptoms that come with parkinson's mm. so that that you know um that slowness of movement the bradykinesia the rigidity the stiffness um and and in some circumstances in some cases the, the tremor as well mm. um so if we think about mindfulness um can you um, talk a little bit about how maybe mindfulness can help with mm. some of maybe the motor symptoms, but also, as we know with Parkinson's, there are so many non-motor symptoms. Um, and often these non-motor symptoms are, are, the, are the things that really do cause mm. trouble for people, aren't they? They really are um, something that affects, directly affects their lives. Absolutely. Um, so can you, can you just yeah. sort of explain so, how that might help? So I, I think, I mean, I can respond to this question almost from two perspectives, from the, the more academic angle, but also maybe then I'll speak a bit more personally. Mm -hmm. um, so from the academic perspective, there are a number of trials that have explicitly um, examined and tested an, an approach called mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is a, an eight-week package, if you like, um, for delivering mindfulness integrated with a range of... Um, understandings about stress physiology, stress psychology, and, and integrated with a sort of quite a systematic training in how to apply mindfulness to your everyday life. So this, so MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction, is the approach that's most often being researched for people with Parkinson's. And there's quite a, there's, um, I wouldn't say the research is really advanced in this field, but there's enough trials for there to have been a, a, some meta-analyses, which means that the data gets gathered together so that you can then look at the, the evidence en masse. And, and it's really encouraging. So um, there's, there's very strong indications that MBSR is supportive to people in terms of the non-motor symptoms that you're speaking about, particularly anxiety and depression. And we know that from all the other evidence around mindfulness, which there's very strong evidence for mindfulness for both preventing depression, but also for helping people with low mood um, in an ongoing way and, and for working with anxiety. Um, there's strong evidence around stress reduction, which is really, you know, it's in the title. That's, that's the sort of core focus for MBSR. And what the, the sort of, the sort of interlinking of stress with Parkinson's is really important because as you know, stress, exacerbates the motor symptoms um, and probably the non-motor symptoms. Um, so I know from personal experience when I'm feeling stress, my tremor is worse. Um, and I don't sleep as well. And then I feel groggy the next day and so and it builds. Um, and but also there's evidence that stress at chronic stress um, is implicated in accelerating progression. So stress is a really important factor um, to be working with for people with Parkinson's. Um, the other pieces that the evidence is pointing to is about is around self-care and self-management. So Parkinson's, one of the sort of blessings of Parkinson's is there's a lot you can do. One of the curses of Parkinson's is there's a lot you can do about it. And it's almost like you have to work with that dynamic that that it, there's um, so much that we can be proactive around in relation to managing our condition, um, but that can feel like a pressure too, um, and 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 another stress. Um, so so the mindfulness I think is really helpful in in for me. This is perhaps where I get a bit more personal. It helps me to have a sense of 
um, motivating me to, to be proactive, but also being compassionate with myself about also what the limits of that and what's possible. And um, so really having a sense of taking good care of myself within it all. Um, so sort of on again on a more post personal level I mean it was a you know mindfulness doesn't inoculate us and it's, it doesn't inoculate us from horrible things happening in our lives Parkinson's still happened to me and other things will happen um, and it was a huge shock and un really unexpected for me but I think where the mindfulness really supported me was in, a, in enabling me to allow myself to feel that shock and to feel the grief and the loss of the future that I thought I was going to have um, and to feel the sadness. But what I don't feel has happened is that I haven't got stuck in that place. Um, so I think mindfulness really helps us to flow with emotions as they're arising and not to push them away and pretend they're not there um but also not to hold on to them um and, and these are such an amazing skills to have because mm. i think to be able to you know you're talking a lot about um the stress anxiety mm. these are non-motor symptoms these are symptoms that we know the medication will will not help right um you know your medication will help your motor symptoms. We know now also from the evidence that when we exercise, we can really, really affect, again, the motor symptoms mm -hmm. and potentially the disease progression. Mm -hmm. And I think to a certain extent, exercise can help with endorphin release and, and making us feel better about ourselves. Yeah. But like you said, are those times where things just seem really bad and you get really stuck it's mm. having this, the tools, the, the mm. skill to be able to, to work through that and work yeah. with that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and yeah, and to me, as a, um, you know, c coming from, from a physiotherapy perspective and looking at um, Parkinson's from, from a, a therapist, professional mm. point of view, from that side of things, for me, that, that seems to be um, a fantastic opportunity mm. for people to be able to engage in that um, and also um, as you said to motivate you to do things yeah. we know with Parkinson's that apathy is mm. a huge um, part of the symptoms there is a reason there is a chemical reason you know dopamine also drives motivation as well as it being a, mm. a neurotransmitter as well as driving movement it makes us more motivated so people mm. when they have Parkinson's often um, really struggle with motivation and can't understand why they've suddenly become this person that isn't mm -hmm. motivated, that hasn't got that interest um, yeah. that they, they had before. Um, yeah. For you, Actually, I think that's a really, that's another key place, I think, where mindfulness has an impact is that it, that, that, that actually the, the very practice of mindfulness, I, this is, um, I haven't, this is not evidence-based, this is a sort of personal perspective on it, but my sense is that when we practice mindfulness, we're actually influencing the reward system in our brain because it's, a, it's you're direct by when you're directly engaged with the present moment, that's inherently nourishing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it counteracts. So and it's, it builds in curiosity and and um, proactive engagement, which I think counteracts that the, the lack of reward circuitry. Yeah. that we have yeah we could even you know and as you said the evidence isn't there mm. the written research evidence the randomized control trials anything isn't there yet but if we think of the theory if we think of mm. neuroplasticity yeah. if we think of learning again learning a new skill learning mindfulness is a mm. skill to be in mm. that present moment we are driving neuroplastic change in the brain as a mm. result of that um, and and if it is, you know, if that is towards the circuits that that, that drive reward, then that's fantastic because mm, mm. Like you said it kind of it works hand in hand. Then it's another um, way of in, helping you engage in yeah. other activities in life, which we know is so important for your Parkinson's as well. So yeah. Yeah. exciting, exciting. Yeah. 
So we've spoken about how it will help the potentially the, the non-motor symptoms and and therefore maybe you know the motor symptoms too. Um, and and when when we exercise at Rachel Peak, we talk about um, I'm, we were all, always a great believers about being in the moment when we exercise because for us um, the type of exercise that we teach is we call it intelligent exercise we you need to think you need to as I said you need to drive those new, new circuits in your brain it has to be challenging for you but you also have to to feel what's happening in your body and I get a feeling <laughs> that that being mindful and, and, and practice of mindfulness is going to really help yes. um, with the, those elements when it comes to um, Parkinson's specific exercise as well. Yeah, definitely. What are your thoughts? Yeah, because part because the 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 sort of central aspect of mindfulness training is it's body based. So we're we're training our capacity to be more connected to the physicality of our experience rather than being caught in the mental processes around that so when we're in, where you know so when we're engaged in the exercises and we add mindfulness to that you've then got the capacity to really immerse yourself in the feeling of it as it's happening so um, if you're you know if you're going for power you're really feeling the place where the, that, you know, that amplitude and the power is actually, so it's not just a concept, it's a sensation. Um, and if you're, if you're working with intensity, you're really, you're, you're, you're with that. Um, and, it, you know, again, I think it's about this, the sort of immersion in the moment uh, in a very physical way. Uh, so, I, I would just, yeah, absolutely underline that. And I think also it keeps the interest. So, you know, we're doing something that has the potential to get a bit tedious mm -hmm. and repetitious and, dare I say it, boring. But, <laughs> yes. but you know, the re but actually if you engage in it with this sense of sort of freshness of mind, so that every time you're doing it is the only time you're doing it in this moment because this moment is the only time you'll ever experience this moment mm -hmm. then you've got this sense of um really giving it all you've got in this moment yeah. um and and then it again that sort of reward system i think is it becomes it's part of it um so that you're you're actually and you can, I know, so I play with it. So I foreground different. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to just feel my feet here for this. So I'm going to really sort of sense my core. And, you know, so you can kind of play with it. You can make the whole process um, interesting by actually adding elements in yeah. from a mindfulness perspective as you're exercising. Being aware of different parts of your body. Definitely, yeah. The awareness, isn't it? And I'm, I'm also thinking, you know, if you are that aware, then... Mm. I know it's about being in that moment and being in that, but it's going to surely help you as well compare to to another session in some way. So because you have that body awareness, mm. you, I think you know if I'm thinking about how we track, how we look at how people are progressing, and how um, again it goes down back down to trying to teach people to really feel, know their body, know yeah. how their body is feeling, how different parts of their body are feeling. Um, yeah. So giving them um, the, the tools to be able to assess, self-assess all the time, yeah. self-assess. And, and I'm sure mindfulness will help with that, too. Yeah, I think um, I think it would. Um, and, it, you know, it's always going to be so. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the exciting thing is that we are running an eight week course, aren't we? Yes. In mindfulness, we are opening it up to people with Parkinson's, whether they've just been diagnosed, newly diagnosed, or if they've been diagnosed sometime, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's appropriate for anybody with Parkinson's to be able to, mm. to, to do this. Um, and also, we're interested in, 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 in people that might be living with people with Parkinson's too, right? Yeah. Because equally, um, I think it's something that, as I said at the beginning, that all of us should be able to, to, to um, 
have a hold on it and mm. uh, and it can be beneficial so mm. so we're happy for people that other people to come along too is that right absolutely i mean my sense is that if you come along with your partner or your sister or your you know whoever is your support team your main support team that that would be very supportive in and and connecting i think to do this together and to then you know go away and do the home practice together um would is a i think is a lovely way of um joining together in in um, learning these new skills yeah fantastic and yeah. So, so just just run through exactly how it how the course will work mm. so so mindfulness based stress reduction is a very established curriculum uh, so there's it's it's a it's a process of eight two and a half hour sessions delivered weekly um, with a practice day in between week six and seven and at the moment we're delivering it online because of the context we're in and actually that works extraordinarily well um, we've been doing that all of our trainings are online currently and we've been really heartened by how well that's going um, and basically, it, it in so I'm going to be teaching this course, and so I'll be guiding practices. There's a, there's a, a series of practices, meditation practices that in, that include some of them are movement practices, um, some of them are sitting down practices, and some of them are lying down practices. But they're all adaptable for anybody who you know. So you you, you basically work with where you're at, and so if if um, the movements I'm suggesting don't work for you, you do other movements. So if sitting doesn't work for you, you lie down. So, you know, it's a, it's a very invitational program. The essence in a way is learning to develop mindfulness skills so you can take better care of yourself. And that's embedded into how you engage with the program. Um, and then we, it's very interactive. So with, we work with a group and we, we're going to limit this to there'll be 25 including myself and support persons so we can all fit on one screen basically um, and and we'll be after the practices we'll be engaged in conversation so what we're exploring is discovering our own we're discovering about the human mind and and how it interacts with the human body and what so it's it's a it's a training in really learning more about the processes which in a way they're so close to us, but we often don't know our own processes. Mm -hmm. So you're getting to, to, you're putting the microscope on discovering your own habit patterns, the way that we move into autopilot, um, the implications that has for how we react to what, to, to things we don't like, um, how, you know, how um, we tend to push away sensations and, and emotions we don't want and, and the implications for that. We're learning about stress physiology, um, and and then applying that in our everyday lives. Um, so there's there's it, yeah we do, it follows a kind of very clear process of building mindfulness skills, but then systematically looking at how that's relevant in managing the challenges of our lives. There's there's um, home practice in between, so we we'll be asking participants to engage in 45 minutes of practice per day, which is a is a is a demand. So it is really worth considering whether this is the, a good time to be doing this. We tend to recommend that people don't take the course when they've just had a, you know, a, a really, you know, they're in the midst of moving house or they've just got divorced or, the, the, you know, big, big emotional stuff is happening because it's the course in and of itself is demanding and it's an investment. Mm -hmm. So you're really basically making an investment in your in your well-being and actually in the well-being of everybody you, who surrounds you because they will also benefit yeah. um, and we're not necessarily saying that you need to practice 45 minutes for the rest of your life but it's if you put that investment in you'll reap the benefits of that and you can make choices about how you take it forward after the course in terms of the level of engagement with the practices but you will, you can't undo awareness. So the course will build your awareness of your own processes and that will be with you forever. Sounds like, yeah, it sounds amazing. And it sounds like um, it's an opportunity to learn skills that potentially can be life-changing. Yeah. Um, and and um, something I think that everybody should um, should engage in, short mm. Parkinson's or, or no Parkinson's, but um, mm -hmm. I can see its value 
um, and it's incredible value for people with Parkinson's. Mm. Um, so I'm very excited about it. Now we have a free, we've got a free trial coming up, haven't we? A free session we're going to open to to as many people as, as mm. we can, just, just so they can have a taste mm -hmm. of, of what it's all about, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and that's on December the 11th. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and um, I will, um, we'll have details of how to join that. So anybody can join that session, can't they, Rebecca? And, and Absolutely, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how we're going to run that taster session and, and what yeah. can affect? Yeah, so, so um, my encouragement is that um, this is open for anybody. So if you're just a bit interested and curious about mindfulness, even if you're thinking that you might not take the course that's on offer at this time, then do come along. Um, so I'll talk about what mindfulness is, I'll talk about what the mindfulness-based stress reduction course is, and what, what's involved and the commitment involved in that and some of the evidence around that. I'll also um, be talking a bit personally about my own experience of mindfulness and, and uh, a friend who exercises with Reach Your Peak who has also had a long-standing mindfulness practice going back before her diagnosis is also going to be present in the space and, and will speak about her experience. And both of us are very open to being questioned. And um, so it'll be a little bit interactive. I'll also guide some meditation practices um, so people can have a feel for the, the practical sense of what it, you know, what the process is, what's involved. Um, and we'll, we'll probably, the session will be about an hour and a half in length. Um, yeah so oh fantastic and it's open to as we, we said you know people with parkinson's but also um mm -hmm. people that um part of your support team whoever you've got yeah. who you're living with or anybody who who you think might be a benefit to come along as well so open definitely to yeah yeah fantastic so we look forward to that um, and finding out more uh, about that. And um, we'll put together the links. Uh, you'll know how to um, join that um, join that taster session with us at Reach Your Peak. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much um, for coming along today. Thank you so much for it's been a pleasure. talking to us about and being so yeah. open and so honest um, about, um, about yourself. Um, mm it's just it's so amazing to to hear you speak like this after just just being diagnosed with the, with this condition mm -hmm. you know it just you, you know it obviously shows how wonderful um, mm -hmm. mindfulness is as well at, at being able to um help help you through you know help you so far. yeah well i've certainly been grateful uh, that i've i've had a practice it's been a huge support through what is inevitably been a difficult time yeah and i look forward um to our session on the 11th of december thanks so much for back. I look forward to welcome bye, -bye. goodbye